Not many weather conditions stop me from doing what I love, landscape photography, hiking and producing videos. As an amateur videographer, the latter occasionally tests my limits when the Lake District throws its best punches. What you're about to see is a day that was captured by the occasional shaky footage and dodgy audio. But still, looking back now, persistent as always, I managed to enjoy some black and white landscape photography. My adventure started at the bottom of Hard Knock Pass, England's steepest road in the Lake District. I had driven over the pass before and remembered my nerves being tested as I was entering the unknown. This time, however, I thought I'd walk it and enjoy what it had to offer. Hello everybody and welcome back to my vlog. Today you join me near Hard Knock on a very, very windy day. The Mountain Weather Information Service website predicted uh, yesterday when I last looked gusts between 60 to 70 mile per hour on the summits. They weren't lying. I'm at Hard Knot. I've just climbed Hard Knot in the southern fells of the Lake District. There's no point filming me because it was absolutely horrendous, ferocious winds. I'm near Hard Knot Pass, which is England's uh, steepest road. I managed to park at the bottom, and me being me, I walked it, walked to the top. I'm filming now. I've come down from over to the end. I'm doing it best. I've come down from the fell Hard Knot, and my plan is to go to the summit of Harter Fell. Now there's two Harter Fells. Harter Fell today where I'm at is in the uh, Eskdale region and it's appeared on a, a few of my photos recently in my vlogs at a very prominent um, shape indeed so I'm hoping to get there. I've managed to find something uh, in terms of photography. Today is going to be a black and white day and the reason because of that is there's no direct light, it's a very moody day. I'm not saying that you can't have uh, good black and white photography days on uh, sunshiny days because harsh shadows create some wonderful images indeed. But today I am going to stick with black and white photography. I found this pool of water, some lovely patterns going on, but I'm struggling to find a composition which I like um, because it's, it's lacking a bit of background, or so I'm saying at this moment in time. I fired for a few shots using my 16-35mm lens and my 70-200mm lens, and I'll get back home and process them, and I'll let you see those now. I had to make a decision as the 60 to 70 mile per hour gusts of wind were relentless and proving it difficult to film and hike. You see me here descending from Hard Knot, heading back down to the pass. I was getting constantly attacked by the strong winds, I was also slippery underfoot. My walking poles thankfully came to my aid helping me balance. I reached the pass and the heavens opened biting my face with this horizontal onslaught. My decision was becoming easier to make. There are moments throughout my fell walking when the conditions are so bad, I think to myself, the mountains can wait. And that's exactly what's happened now. 
My intention was to climb Harta Fell. The conditions are proving somewhat dangerous. So I've got, I had to make a decision, or I made a decision um, to climb that fell another day. It's late on as well. I've got about two hours of sunlight left. I started late, to be honest. But I'm currently walking down England's steepest road, Hanot Pass. I'd be a fool not to capture it using its wonderful weaving lines in black and white. Black and white photography is all about creating a good contrast. It's also about ensuring there's a good percentage of blacks and whites, a full range of mid-tones as well. And it's also important to make good use of the proportions of the elements you're using in your frame. For example, what I'm doing here, I'm basically using the weaving line of the path and I'm going to increase exposure of that and I reckon it will form about a quarter, maybe a third of the whole frame so it has more impact. It then leads you on uh, to the fells beyond, There's some wonderful layers and uh, clouds as well. I'll, I'll play around in post-processing but I like this it was difficult to shoot. I'm basically shooting into the wind and the rain. The rain as we speak now has subsided but basically what I did and it's a bit of a trick for you I mounted the camera on the tripod two second timer and I put a cloth of the lens, make sure obviously it's clean, free of any uh, rain spots. Put a two second timer on and as soon as the shutter is about to fire off, quickly took away the cloth. Obviously I checked the image as well and it took a fair few images. I wasn't going to mess around with filters, um, no, no point with that with the oncoming rain. So I bracketed one stop either side, F14 again because it's quite a uh, an image where there's quite a lot of uh, depth as well. Focus again about a third way in. I was a bit conscious about the shutter speed because yes I have got a very sturdy tripod and I use the weight of my bag to weigh it down um, but checking the few images slightly soft still whether that was me just not focusing correctly but I, the, the last shot I increased the ISO to 400 which gave me a shot speed of 30th of a second. So yeah and I'm fairly pleased with this shot as well as I say I'm going to play around with it in post processing. Testing day. So the rain has returned, driving sideways it was at one point. The wind has not, has not subsided at all. I found a better shelter here. Uh, I've also found a, a decent image as well. Thinking black and white, thinking contrast. I'm using again the pass, hand not pass, as a strong shape leading into the scene. as a nice prominent um, pike as the background which is nicely shrouded in some low lying cloud. I just love black and white. You'll probably find a lot of it in my, or you will find a lot of it in my portfolio. A certain timelessness about it. Fine art. Wherever that may be. Wherever that may be. You can really go to town as well with post process and using your imagination. Really crunching those blacks. Lifting those whites. Basically what I do is use the tonal curve first of all and then I just do some local adjustments um, in this case what I'll do on probably most images uh, today is to highlight or increase exposure on the um, pass the leading line 
But again, previous images, I'll probably increase the uh, exposure on the pools of water as well. And also making sure I do some dodge and burning, deepening those blacks and increasing those lights as well. Right, that is my cue to go. That's my cue to go. Remember, if you're interested, take a look at my website. Uh, I'm currently doing a project, as you know, which is all black and white, based in the Yorkshire Dales, called Carved. I managed to take a, a few shots as well with my phone. If you remember, I'm currently posting phone images only on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, James underscore R uh, underscore Burns. Right, right, that's me done. I well, wonder, wonder, walk back to my car in the driving rain, talk to them, and head off home. Keep smiling, look after yourself. Bye bye for now.